Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so good to see, see so many people here. Um, as, as she said, I'm, I'm Anna, and this is my colleague, Kanerva. And we, part of, we, we are part of the Moodle team at the University of Helsinki. So we, as a team, not only test new features uh, and, and plugins and, and whatnot, but we also advise and instruct the teaching staff in digital pedagogy, and um, as well as technical issues related to Moodle. Um, and as I think all of us uh, Moodlers know, there's a lot of that sort of silent knowledge, those little tips and tricks that we might know, uh, but we sometimes struggle to, to actually impart them to, to our teaching staff. And that's why we wanted to talk to you about a, a sort of an informal, um, sort of a easily digestible way of, of giving teachers um, valuable Moodle tips. Um, and well, basically what we did, because it's in our job description to, to test and evaluate new features. So when one, one of our team members found, found uh, the advent calendar, uh, we just decided uh, to test it on our teachers, basically. <laughs> um, and um, in the presentation, I'm, I'm also going to talk about um, a bit about the activity itself, the advent calendar, but we're also going to talk about the response we got and what type of content we created. So the um, advent calendar, the content type, is, is it's fairly easy to modify visually, both in terms of the overall looks, um, but also the, the content of the individual doors as well. Um, it's possible to embed videos and, and create sort of more uh, visual, visual content. Um, and it does help, uh, seem to help engage teachers or, well, users in, in, um, just by, by, by its visual nature. Um, it's automatically timed and the content can be edited even while the calendar is running, which was very good because we didn't have to have all of the material ready already at the beginning of uh, December. Um, and also the design mode enables uh, you to sort of preview the calendar, but also open the calendar. Um, we opened it in January for the teachers because not many of them, um, for obvious reasons, checked, um, checked or logged into Moodle on, on Christmas Eve. And we actually sort of hoped they wouldn't. They did. Some of them, them did. <laughs> Uh, but I have to point out that, unfortunately, the, the advent calendar is not fully accessible, so take that into consideration um, if you're planning on using it. Uh, but yeah, more about what we actually did. Um, as I said, we, we always try to find new ways to engage our teachers and find easier ways to, to impart our knowledge to them. Um, but I don't know if you've noticed this, but teachers are incredibly busy. They do not have time uh, to sit um, in, in long um, training sessions or read long, uh, uh, long inst instructional texts, and they may, might not even know sort of what questions to ask. Um, and here's just a quick preview of, of a couple of, of doors. I'm not sure if you can see them, but if you want to, if you want to check out the entire uh, Moodle calendar, we will be able to, to show it to you. So. Just give a shout out if you want to hear about it. Um, but yeah, we also actually wanted to boost our sort of holiday spirit within our team as well, and ended up producing some, um, well, fairly unconventional content that, that we'll be sharing later. But this is the more of a technical side of, of the um, content we created. Yes. So now let's go to some statistics, as we like to call them. So in our university, uh, we have uh, a lot of training sessions for teachers. Well, not a lot, a lot. Uh, but last year, we had around 300 of the teachers participate. And that's around a quarter of the teaching staff. And if we compare that information to the fact that we had 532 participants, well, enrollments from the teachers, that means that we almost managed to double our engagement with the teachers just by the, with this one activity. Um, to get the teachers to join the course, the calendar, we didn't do any special marketing. We followed our normal procedures. And that, for me, tells that the activity itself 
is something exciting for teachers. And also, we got teachers to come back day after day. And that means that there was also something important, something special within the calendar itself. Here are some graphs. Looks really nice, high and then goes low. Um, but as the first one shows, uh, many of the teachers visited during the first week of December. And after that, the visiting numbers decline. Uh, but they are still at a really nice level from our point of view. Um, the last one where there are 11 visits, uh, that's from like late December, early uh, January. Yeah, that's the month. But also, we had teachers coming back even in August to this activity, which is, was really surprising to me. Like, why would they come back? But there's something interesting about this activity in H5P, so it's good to put behind your ear. Also, in the, the second graph shows you the, how many of the teachers returned. So that's around 50%. And that's a really good number. And the visit interval between uh, visits from teachers who returned for the second time and more was 11 days. And how the H5P advent calendar works is like a normal Christmas calendar. You can, if you come on the 15th of December, then you can open all the doors until the 15th day. So the teachers were able to get the information that we had put behind the doors. So we are not too worried about these teachers not coming every day because they were still able to get the information. And also some super loyal ones who wanted to come every day. So that's also nice. Uh, quickly through some feedback that we got from the teachers. On the calendar itself, the teachers like the tidbit approach that we had. We had small, small texts, like not too much information. And it was also a new and like activating way for teachers to learn about Moodle and its features. And that led the teachers to be more comfortable with Moodle because they have used it a lot, but like they're still not comfortable with it in most cases. And that is leading to a better use experience for them. The teachers also presented us with some um, ideas for this year's calendar, which we are making, and also for some technical aspects, as well as asking for this type of content to come all year around. What was really interesting is that the teachers specified that they wanted to have this uh, like tidbit approach also in the future because more longer the texts are, they said that if it's too long, I will not continue with this. So all in all, based on the res results that we got and the amount of resources we as a team used, this was a really nice, light, and fun way to share the knowledge that we have on Moodle and engage the teachers. And um, finally, just a couple of things I, I wanted to mention, like what we learned from, from this first run. We're definitely bringing the calendar back this year. It's been requested and, and we've, we're starting to build it. Um, but also we've added um, short presentations to our, we have a weekly um, Digipeda cafe, online, an online cafe where teachers uh, can come and ask, ask questions from our, our experts on matters of, relating to um, digital pedagogy, continuous learning, all kinds of educational technology. Um, but yeah, now that we've added these uh, 10 to 15 minute presentations to, to the beginning of those cafes, uh, the number of t attendees in the cafes has more than doubled for those, those sessions. And um, many of the teachers have also uh, stayed, stayed after the presentation to chat with us and our experts about the, um, well, about the topic or, or something else entirely. Um, and many of the attendees ha had never, um, never before been to the Digipeda Cafe. Um, yeah, we've only had a couple of these presentations so far, so we uh, aren't yet sure if this is an ongoing trend, but we um, have received some really good feedback. So, um, and some teachers have actually mentioned that, that um, the reason they, they came to, to the, um, to the uh, Digi Better Cafe was precisely that um, it was 15 minutes of their time, even if they then ended up spending the entire hour talking to us. So, um, as a final thing, I mentioned that we pre produced some, some more unconventional content within our team. 
uh, and we're going to share a shortened version of our uh, holiday greeting to our teaching staff. Enjoy your Moodle courses, enjoy your Moodle courses, enjoy your Moodle courses again next year. Good tidings we bring to you and your King. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. <laughs> That was fantastic, thank you. <laughs> Any questions? I already have the mic. <laughs> thank you so much, it's so inspiring. I'm so doing that this year. Great. Um, I just have two, uh, two quick questions. The first is, does, does it send a message beforehand when a door is available or? Unfortunately, at least last year it didn't. So it was up to the teacher to remember to go back. Mm -hmm. And that's also why on the third week there was a bump because we reminded the teachers to go back. Mm -hmm. So I, I wish that at some point there would be that feature or that we can build it to the Moodle area to send automatic messages like every week or every day. Um, but unfortunately, at least last year that it wasn't already in the activity. Okay, cool. And my second quick question is, um, was the emphasis on Christmas any, in any way problematic in terms of religious sensitivities in, among your staff? Yeah, so, um, so we, we come from Finland, and still in Finland, around 73% are Christians. And all, that's the same thing in our staff, and it's really part of the culture. So it, we didn't get pushed back on that aspect. Also, the things that we had in the advent calendar, that was the only Christmas thing that we had, the videos. It was all information, happy Independence Day stuff. Um, here's Moodle, Moodle User Associates, and this will come up in 3.11. So we really focused on Moodle, except on the 24th one. And I think this is the only mention of Christmas. We, we changed the song as well uh, so that it wouldn't like, be the most... Religious. Yeah, mm. yeah. So we tried to take that into consideration. But an advent calendar, by its nature, is... I mean, it does come with those issues. But we didn't get any, any negative feedback on, on it. And there are actually several uh, advent calendars um, at our uni, uh, produced by other teams as well, so it's a sort of a common practice within our university. There are a lot of calendars going around. <laughs> cool, thank yeah. you. But I hope that the teachers, when they start using it, you can get creative with it, like daily tips for t students or little discussion points. So that's how we use it, but I hope that you get ideas from this one. Yeah. Silly question, but is high quality harmony singing a requirement to work in your team? <laughs> that was great singing. Well, we do hold auditions every year for this project. Um, and it's, as you can hear, it was really high quality and we totally did practice this for more than one hour, <laughs> including the recording time. So yes, it is a requirement.